At dawn and dusk, these miniature dragons chase their insect prey across the sky in a killer game of tag. But all is eerily still and quiet when the sun is out and these birds go undercover as twigs. Today, we are talking about night jars, masters of camouflage by day, tiny terrors by night. Hi, my name is Arania Iyer, and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. Night jars are darkness-loving birds that can be found across the world. In some regions, they're known as night hawks, or, quite self-explanatorily, bug eaters. There are almost 100 different night jar species spread out between three subfamilies and 20 genera. They can be found on every continent, except for Antarctica. They also shy away from dry mountain areas and a few select island groups. Some well-known birds in this order include common nighthawks, whippoorwills, parakeets, and Eurasian nightjars. These bug-eyed bug eaters were grouped together with fellow potus and frogmouths until 2021, when the decision was made to split them into different orders. One characteristic that was shared among all of these birds was their huge mouths. I'm talking ginormous. It is these big mouths that earned the night jars the nickname goat suckers. Folk tales from more than 2,000 years ago recount stories of this bird swooping across the evening sky to presumably attack goat udders. The idea was so pervasive that the scientific name for the family is Caprimulgiformes which literally translates to goat milkers. In reality though, they were probably flying around eating insects that are found near farm animals like goats. Let's chalk this up to bad eye care and poor lighting during the dark ages. Even with 2020 vision, you would need a laser sharp focus and maybe infrared goggles to spot these statues in the wild. Night jars use cryptic coloration as a defense tactic to blend into their surroundings. Their feathers are a combination of black, white, and every shade of brown you can imagine. For the species that roost in trees, they even position themselves horizontally to look like a piece of branch. There is lots of physical variation in the goat milker family, with a few among them sure to steal your heart. But first, let's start with the Great Eared Nightjar. This bird is found in subtropical forests across Southeast Asia. It is the largest nightjar, with individuals getting up to 40 centimeters long. It is also the second heaviest nightjar, weighing up to 150 grams. I don't know about you, but with the two little beige tufts atop this bird's head, it reminds me a lot of Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. Though the dragon roar could use a little bit of work. Tied for second place for the Do These Birds Actually Exist Award are the Lyre-Tailed Nightjar and the pennant wing Nightjar. Both these birds have abnormally large feathers that give them a spectacular mythical edge. Lyre-Tailed Nightjars of the Western Andes have outer tail feathers that are twice as long as their body. Pennant wing Nightjars, on the other hand, are found in Africa and have their second primary wing feather that trails behind them majestically in flight. A great contender for third place would be the standard wing nightjar, whose tail of two tails would leave anybody speechless. It's likely that all these extravagant feathers play an important role during mating flight displays. If the male is successful in impressing the female, they will mate, and then she will lay one to three eggs. A perfect ending to a tail of two tails. Most night jars prefer field and open habitats for nesting, especially woodland edges. Some are ground nesters and will scrape out little bowl-like shapes that will hold their eggs, which are often patterned to blend in with their environment. Others take it a step further and nest in small ledges on a tree branch. 
Across most Nightjar species, the male and female share the incubating responsibilities for about two to three weeks, though typically it's the female that spends most of the time on the nest. Here, mom and dad will try to minimize movement to prevent detection from predators like pine martens and red foxes. But when threatened, birds like nightjars and killdeer use a cunning strategy where they fake an injury to guide their predators away from their nests. Sneaky, sneaky! Once the chicks hatch, the parents get to work feeding the nestlings. In the case of the common poor will, while the male is feeding the first clutch, the female will sometimes lay a second clutch, 100 meters from the first nest site. This bird definitely takes the cake for most efficient parenting. Newly hatched chicks are dependent on both mom and dad for food. Night jars are insectivores, and their preferred meals usually consist of swarming insects, like mosquitoes and flies. Because these birds have unusually large mouths, they often chomp on some of the bigger flying insects, like beetles, moths, and winged ants. Similar to owls, chick and adult night jars eat all the nutritious parts of the insect, but regurgitate all the indigestible materials as pellets. Nestlings are independent and ready to fend for themselves two weeks after hatching. Many night jars, like the Indian night jar, are residents, which means that they spend all their time within the same region. Other night jars, like the common nighthawk, are migratory. Western Canadian populations of nighthawks have been radio tagged and are found to travel between their breeding grounds in Alberta to their wintering grounds in the Amazon. Another North American night jar species does something altogether different. The common poor will is unlike all other birds in that it enters a state of torpor. Torpor is a physiological state that only select birds like hummingbirds, doves, and poor wills can enter to conserve energy by lowering body temperature, breathing, and heart rate for weeks and sometimes months on end. Some indigenous communities like the Hopi tribe have known about this behavior for a while. They call poor wills holchigo, or the sleeping one. This likely refers to the behavior when these birds are found among piles of rock in a sleep-like state of torpor. While these birds don't cause much of a ruckus when they are in torpor, the opposite is true during their active periods in spring, summer, and fall, especially during feeding times. Many night jars are also named for the sounds they make. For example, the whippoorwill. Or the chuckwill's widow. It is no wonder why some night jar calls have been nicknamed the witch's cackle and have been suspected of witchery themselves. Take a listen to the European Niger for proof. I'm not so sure I'd be able to fall asleep peacefully after hearing those ghastly sounds in a dark forest. What I do know though, is I would prefer hearing these bird calls over a silent forest devoid of Niger activity. Thankfully, Niger species are doing okay, though a few are at risk of extinction, and many have decreasing populations. There is still a lot unknown about the factors contributing to their decline, though it is largely suspected to be a result of crashing insect numbers across the world, due to heavy pesticide use and habitat destruction. Some night jars, like the Indian night jars, are especially vulnerable to vehicle strikes, as they nest or roost on roads. They freeze in place when flashed with bright car headlights, and unfortunately perish as a result of their lack of movement. There is, however, lots of work being done to better understand this unique group of birds across the world, and subsequent efforts to protect key habitat and maintain viable insect populations. Though much more is needed. With so many different species, each with their own kooky characteristics, it's hard to pick a favorite out of this family. Though between you and me, it would be the Great Eared Nightjar. What a distinguished gentleman. 
What's your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to hit subscribe for new episodes every week. Keep soaring to new heights. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Arania Iyer and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. Night jars are darkness loving birds that can be found around the world. Oh, oh keep going? Oh, okay. Okay, 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 no, 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 okay. Night jars are darkness that can be found across the world, though they're also known as nighthawks, or quite self explanatorily, bug eaters in some regions. Too scratchy? No, it's the ears. Damn it. No! They're tingly. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna, you think it might be an issue. Give us a lot. Okay. Hi, my name is Arania, and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. I can take them off. I have like four other pairs. <laughs> if, we can okay, if, there, if there are other options, <laughs> like those are your favorite ones. My little ones. thing. Yeah. What's your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Just hit it. <laughs>